It was up in Lynchburg City, it was a cold December morning, and I just finished preaching and telling how Christ was born. When lo and behold, I gave the altar to call, and I couldn't believe my eyes. From the back of the church, with suit and all, sound rock right down the aisle. He fell down at the altar and he began to pray. Jesus, please have mercy and wash my sin away. If I live to be a hundred, I won't forget the day. Good have been there when Santa Claus got saved. Somewhere in old Virginia, down at the local mall, there's a born again believer dressed up like Santa Claus. You know him when you see him, there's a smile upon his face. He's telling everybody how Santa Claus got saved. Well, he fell down at the altar and he began to pray. Jesus, please have mercy and wash my sin away. If I live to be a hundred, I won't forget the day. I wish you could have been there when Santa Claus got saved. Well, it fell down at the altar and he began to pray. Jesus, please have mercy and wash my sin away. If I live to be a hundred, I won't forget the day I wish you could have been there When Santa Claus got saved I wish you could have been there When Santa Claus got saved Father, we thank you again for this day All that you have provided But Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace and the opportunity, once again, Father, to come into the house of prayer, lifting holy hands and praising you, Father, loving you, showing our dedication unto you. We thank you, Father, for what you've done, what you're planning to do in our lives as the day go forward. But, Father, we ask you for your presence to be with us today. Touch your heart this morning. Lift them up, Lord. Let your peace be upon them. Let their minds set aside the things of this world and focus upon you. Worship you. Give you thanks, honor, and praise in this day. For we ask it all in Jesus' lovely name. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, King of authority, flow from his throne unto
Folks, this morning, and let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. 
Boy, I'm glad to see you. Here we are in the middle of a Christmas season, and we've got something to celebrate. Brad, listen, look at that camera. What are we celebrating at Christmas? We're celebrating the birth of Jesus, aren't we? Amen. Praise the Lord. And we've got reason to celebrate. I'm glad Jesus came, and you've heard that old cliche. He is the reason for the season, and he really is today. Merry Christmas to you today, and may you just be blessed beyond measure. So glad you've joined us today on the In the Garden program of ministry of the Gethsemane Baptist Church right here in beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia. Come join us in the great celebration next Sunday, the 21st at 6 p.m. Our kids will be also uh, presenting that Christmas special. We're looking forward to just a great celebration. By the way, on Christmas Eve, the 24th, we'll be having a candlelight Christmas uh, communion service starts at 4.30 in the afternoon, a one-hour service. If you'd like to come and celebrate the Lord's table with us in this Christmas season, that's December the 24th at 4.30 in the afternoon. Well, we're glad you're with us, and today we're preaching the message today on the greatest gift. And I'm glad the greatest gift, you think, well, what is that greatest gift? Do you realize it's contained in one word, forgiveness. And I'm glad today that God has forgiven us of our sins and washed our sins away. And today we can know Him in free part of sin and know Him as our personal Savior. Wow, what a blessing to be a child of the King. Amen. And if you're not, well, why not today? Ask Him today to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart, your life, and save you. And I'm glad to tell you, this same Jesus will save you. We're here to celebrate. Yes, joy to the world. The Lord has come. And that's reason to praise Him today. Join us now in music and also in the preaching of God's Word. And may God bless you with a very Merry Christmas. God bless you today. with us and as you find your way back to your seats amen he rules the world with truth and grace and makes a nation through the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of Christmas to you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and welcome today to Gethsemane Baptist Church. We are so glad that you're here and I know God's got a great and mighty blessing for you today by being in his house. It was almost Christmas time and there I stood in another line Trying to buy that last gift or two I'm really in the Christmas mood and standing right in front of me Was a little boy waiting anxiously Pacing around as little boys do And in his hands he held a pair of shoes and his clothes were worn and old And he was covered from head to toe And when it came his time to pay I couldn't believe what I heard him say Sir, I want to buy these shoes For my mama, please It's Christmas Eve and these shoes are just her size 
Could you hurry, sir? Daddy says it's not much time. You see, she's been sick for quite a while, and I know these shoes will make her smile, and I want her to look beautiful. If Mama meets Jesus tonight. Mm-hmm. He counted pennies for what seemed like years And the cashier said, son, there's not enough here He searched his pockets frantically Then he turned and he looked at me and said Mama made Christmas good at a house But most years she just did without Tell me, sir, what am I gonna do? Somehow I've got to buy her these Christmas shoes So I laid the money down Ooh, I just had to help him out And I'll never forget the look on his face When he said, Mama's gonna look so great Sir, I wanna buy these shoes For my mama, please Ooh, it's Christmas Eve And these shoes are just her size Could you hurry, sir? Daddy says it's not much time You see, she's been sick for quite a while And I know these shoes will make you smile And I, I want her to look beautiful Mama meets Jesus tonight I knew I caught a glimpse of heaven's love As he thanked me and ran out I knew that God had sent that little boy To remind me What Christmas is all about Sir, I want to buy the shoes For my mama, please It's Christmas Eve and these shoes are just her side Ah, could you hurry, sir? Daddy says it's not much time You see, she's been sick for quite a while And I, I know these shoes will make her smile And I, I want her to look beautiful Mama meets Jesus tonight Said I want her to look beautiful If Mama meets Jesus tonight Tonight Go in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, Mary's boy child Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, listen to what they say, that man can live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day Joseph and his wife Mary Went to Bethlehem that night They found no room to lay their child Not a single room was inside Hark now hear the angels sing Christ is born today And man can live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Now, by and by, they they found the little nook 
in a stable all for Lord. And on that dark and cold night, Mary's boy child was born. Hark now, hear the angels sing. Listen to what they say. Thank goodness that man can live forevermore because of Christmas Day. The trumpet sound, the angels sing. Listen to what they say. That man can live forevermore because of Christmas Day. That man can live forevermore because of Christmas Day. If you have your Bibles, uh, I'd like to invite you to turn to the book of Ephesians 4 and 32 as we preach today on the greatest gift this Christmas. And I'm sure I could go around the room this morning and I could just hear all kinds of great things about what's the greatest gift this Christmas. I'm sure every one of you would relate it to something that has spirituality to it, right? And, uh, but we all enjoy Christmas, we enjoy the season, but uh, you know, as we look and we try to scale down and figure out exactly what is the real and the greatest gift this Christmas, I think that Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, really gives us an important glimpse into what this message is all about. The Word of God says, and be kind one to another. Boy, have you been Christmas shopping recently? Have you been out on Ward's Road recently? What gets into people that turns them into maniacs? Driving, shopping, crazy. It's like that store only has one of what are that person's after, and all 70,000 people in Lynchburg are all going at the same time to get it. That's not the truth. People go nuts over nothing. And they totally miss the whole meaning of Christmas. And be kind one to another, whew, went out the window. And if you don't believe it, right around the town, you can't even look at Christmas lights. People behind you hurrying you up and making you get through and, and trying to get you past that. I mean, man, it looks like Christmas time is the time we take anything that's got kindness and love with it and throw it out the window. And we turn crazy. But listen, that's not what God wants us to be. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Christmas is a season of extreme delight and extreme schedules and extreme everything that you can think about, extreme foods and everything that you can imagine has to do with extreme in the, in the Christmas season. Uh, we spend times with family, whether we want to or not. <laughs> uh, we remember great moments, and sometimes we suffer through some dignified gift exchanges, and, you know, we uh, hope what we're giving, where we had to cut corners, won't insult the person. Uh, we're forced to show uh, great appreciation for basically the gift that actually doesn't merit a whole lot of appreciation, period. And for all the extreme good and wonderful things that come with the Christmas season, I know that uh, there's a lot for us to rejoice over. There's a lot for us to be excited over. There's a lot for us to praise God for during this great season that we know is Christmas. For all of the, all the extremely good and wonderful things that come our way, we should rejoice, as Ken shared with us this morning, just the mere thought of what this season is all about and the fact that we have a Savior who came and who died and who bore our sins and carried everything was against us. Thank the Lord for that this morning. Amen. And so we realize this. Christmas is a, an extreme season in many fashions and in many forms. Unfortunately, humanity looks at it in all the wrong light and in the wrong ways. Christmas can be extremely, although at times even sorrowful for people and for families, and especially during this time of the year. And 
Many times we reflect on our loved ones who were with us maybe last year and they went to be with the Lord over the course of the year. Christmas can be an extremely stressful time also from memories of a year that maybe that has been filled with sickness and trials and burdens and unresolved pains of the past and all those things just kind of come back and you know you hear those softer tone Christmas songs and those uh, different songs and lyrics of those words that just kind of pull your emotions up to surface and you feel a little twinge of uh, difficulty and struggle in your life. But God in His Word provides us today a glorious prescription for Christmas that, that it's not full of pain, that it's not full of sorrow, that's not full of difficulty, and not full of stress. Hallelujah. Christmas is not about being stressed. Christmas is not about how big the turkey is going to be or how big the ham's going to be or how many plates of this you're going to have and how much weight you're going to put on and all the other things that we do during Christmas, right? I've been trying to lose a little weight so I could fill in those gaps during Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Maybe some of y'all are doing that too. Or what you may be doing, you're just put, piling on right now and think, well, first of the year my resolution will be to lose it. I'm going to tell you something right now. It's a whole lot easier to put it on than it is to take it off, isn't it? Amen. So the, the key is keep it off and you won't have to worry about it. But anyway, I didn't come to give you an aerobic session this morning. And except the Holy Ghost style that you can shout and jump in the pews and praise the Lord. That's about the best aerobics I can give you that will help you spiritually and help you physically, help you mentally, and just keep you focused on the Lord. Amen. But realizing this today, sickness and trials and many things... Uh, come into lives during the Christmas season. But I'm glad that God has really given us something today that is a prescription where at Christmas does not have to be painful and stressful today, but it can be joyful and full of glory, and it today can be full of the glorious presence of God that we can just shout the victory today. How many of you got families today? Say a big amen. amen. How many of you going to spend some time with your family? Say a bigger amen. amen. Listen, you're blessed today. How many of you are going to rejoice over the fact that you got a reason to celebrate Christmas today? That you know what the real meaning is about, and you know who came, and you know what he provided, and you know who he is, and you know what he's done for you, and you just can't be silent about this God whom we serve because he is truly the reason for the season that we rejoice and that we praise God and we thank him for all the great and mighty things that he does for us today. But realizing this today, as you know, some of you have been going to the doctor, and a lot of you have been going to the doctor and you've been having the flu bugs and you've had the sinus infections and you've had this and you've had that and I'll tell you what in, in society today if you don't have it you better thank God but don't be prepared it will show up any day I know a lot of folks, but you know, and many of you have been to the doctor, and you went to the doctor, and the doctor said, well, you got this. He wrote you a prescription or called your uh, pharmacy and, and prescribed something for you, and you went and picked it up. And you know what? That prescription is not worth a dime if you don't take it, right? Amen. You can sit that pretty bottle of cephalexin or antibiotics or z pack or all these other terms of, uh, that we have in the medical field. But if you just look at it, it's not going to get in your body. You've got to partake of it. You've got to open the package. You've got to put the water in your mouth, swallow the pills, and in about two or three days, you start to feel like a human again. Amen. But you know what? That medicine's not worth a dime if you don't take it. God's Word today, listen, it is your prescription, and God has provided through this glorious baby that came over 2,000 years ago. He's given us a promise. He's given us a prescription today where you can have a stress-free pain-free Christmas, and that you can enjoy what Christmas is really all about. Amen. This should be a celebration. Now, I know sometimes our hearts get heavy during this time of the year, and we get a little tearful, and we remember some things and some losses and places in our life that we suffered some difficulties. But, you know, today, listen, if your loved ones today are in the presence of God, you can rejoice over that. And today, God is going to take good care of you. And it's nothing wrong with having human emotions. It's nothing wrong. I hear some of the, and I've been tuned in my radio over to uh, nothing but Christmas music. And I, I've been singing about, and of course, some of it I don't thoroughly enjoy. But, you know, I enjoy a lot of the songs. I love the Hallelujah Chorus. If you're in my car and the Hallelujah Chorus comes on, you're going to probably get out deaf. <laughs> Amen. Because, buddy, I tell you, I pump that thing up. And, you know, a lot of these guys, they sit at the, uh, sit at the uh, stoplights and they got all these, these you know, boom, 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 boom. Well, I tell you, 
cop would pull me over for making too much noise too because when the hallelujah chorus comes on, I'm not buzzing, baby, but I'm rocking. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I got something to shout about. Amen. Wow, I tell you, I love it. I love it. I love the Christmas songs, and I love even the crazy songs. I've been listening to some of them. They'll come on with these old ones like Gene Autry singing, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or, you know, Frosty the Snowman, and all that stuff. I enjoy that stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because you enjoy that doesn't mean you've lost your spirituality. Amen. God doesn't mind you enjoying some things in life. But realize, though, today... Rudolph and, snow, and, and uh, the snowman and Frosty and all this other stuff and, and all, this, all the things and the elves and even the Grinch. That's not really what it's all about. It's all about Him. It's all about Him that came. It's all about Him that came to do something for you and I we couldn't do for ourselves and provide something that's so glorious and so grand that every Christian ought to shout about it today. Amen. And the fact today that we have a prescription today that we have received into our heart and our lives, and that's what makes the difference today. You can have a pain-free life today in your soul from even the agonies of yesterday. I know many times we can't seem to get over what we've been through, but I'm telling you, God has made a way where you can get over it, get past it, and press on and go forward in the Lord. Amen. It, it, today, if you would, amen. Praise the Lord. This prescription that I'm going to provide for you today contained in the pages of God's Word, and we read it and shared with you today a portion of it from the Scriptures today as Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus as he was also writing for us today. This prescription is found in one word, and it's called forgiveness. Forgiveness. You realize today you would not be forgiven if God had not sent His Son. You realize if God, and this was God's plan, this was God's choosing, God chose to send His Son this particular way, he chose Mary, He chose the setting, He chose the place, He chose the time, and He sent the Savior. Hallelujah. And when you look into this manger, when you see the videos, and when you hear the songs, and when you sing along, Joy to the World, and Silent Night, and Hark the Hurl, Angels Sing, and, and all these great songs that we sing during the Christmas season, we are reminded today, all of this that He's done has provided the most precious thing that we have, that today we couldn't have heaven Without this thing, we could not have the promise of God in our life. Without this, we could not really have a reason to celebrate without this. And it's the fact that today we have forgiveness that's been given by our God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. Boy, I'm glad today He has provided something today that is absolutely overwhelming to our life. And I'm glad today I have received that forgiveness today. That's what makes, it, makes the difference in our lives. That's what makes the difference even when you're going through the struggles and the trials of life, even when you're facing the hard places and the hard times, to know today that your sins have been forgiven, that God is your Savior. You can claim what Jesus said in John 14 and 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You couldn't have any of that if it had not been for forgiveness. We, we read about and we talk about and we praise the Lord for the fact that one day the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords is coming back. And you know what? None of that would be possible if it had not been for forgiveness. We, we praise the Lord today that we found favor and God has given us His favor and His blessings and His bounty and He's given us that promise today that He will just abundantly bless us in all things today. And that we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and, and our leaf will not wither and whatsoever we do will prosper and that we're blessed going in and we're blessed coming out. We're overtaken by the blessing and all these things that we find contained throughout the pages of God's Word. But you realize everything today that's between these, these two covers of this book today. None of it would be possible if Jesus did not come to provide the forgiveness that we've got today. I'm glad I'm forgiven. I'm a child of the King and I've got reason today to shout the victory because He came to provide forgiveness for every person that would receive Him as that personal Savior. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. If you look close at, at Christmas today, you'll see this underlying foundation of forgiveness. Forgiveness is why God sent His only begotten Son. And this has nothing to do with today the issues of who's got a manger scene and who doesn't have a manger scene, who has a Christmas tree and who doesn't have a Christmas tree, who has presents and don't, who does not have presents. Forgiveness is the gift from God that keeps on giving. 
Amen. And forgiveness is what every sigh or every cry that came from the manger that night and that explains today and it proclaims today that every breath that Jesus breathed on this earth was about the fact that he was coming to provide that word that you see on the screen. It's called forgiveness. Amen. Forgiveness today is why he came to the cradle. Forgiveness today is why He hung on the cross. Forgiveness is why He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Forgiveness is the greatest gift that God has ever given to you and I today. And forgiveness today, listen, this is something today is just not for you, but it's something today that you can give other people, hallelujah, that doesn't wear out and that always will live in your life. There is nothing better than the forgiveness that we can receive during this Christmas season, hallelujah. Forgiveness is what Jesus has given and forgiveness is the it's what God expects us to give. Amen. I said it's what He expects us to give. Actually, one of the extreme things that we celebrate during this Christmas season is that very fact of forgiveness. That today we are forgiven. As sins are blotted out. As stains are gone. Everything that was against us has been cast today for, as far as the east is from the west. And to realize today that we have a reason to celebrate Christmas. But you know, folks, this is just not a rece receiving gift. This is a giving gift. That we've got to give it today. I stand before you today and listen, I'm celebrating Christmas. Hallelujah today. My family is celebrating Christmas. And you know why? Because we have been extremely forgiven of God. Amen. We today have favor. We have blessings. We have today His divine hand upon us today because we are forgiven. Hallelujah. The slate is clean. We've got relationship. We've got favor. We've got abundance. We've got God. We've got it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of you today in this sanctuary has a gift awaiting you today. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. No, it's not wrapped with pretty paper and it's not today adorned with glistening bows and all the shiny, plush things that we enjoy seeing. Hallelujah. This gift comes wrapped in the love of the Father that's been supplied by the Son. Amen. This gift. Listen about this gift. This gift will change your life. This gift will change your attitude. This gift will change your heart. This gift will change your eternal destination. This gift will make such an awesome difference in your life today. This is the gift of forgiveness, and it's been paid for and purchased at a high cost today. For God sent his only begotten son to secure us that gift and to give it to us today. Amen. Oh, no greater gift. Hallelujah. Amen. And realizing this today, forgiveness is, is, a, is a grand gift to receive, and it's a great gift to give. Amen. Sure, it's easy to forgive your enemies after you've forgotten, or after, should I say, after you've gotten even with them. Amen. The joy of Christmas, as in terms of a gift today, is when you give it away, and you have been privileged of enjoying it and being the recipients of what you're sending. You understand what I'm saying? For you to give forgiveness you have to receive forgiveness. Amen. And God wants us to be forgiving people. I'm glad that his word declares that there's a process that's called reconciliation. And then it comes to the sharing of the gift of forgiveness today. Amen. I'm sure today, and I, I'm sure in your lives and in your family lines and your friend lines and all those things that we come in contact with. I'm sure today everybody in life has had some bad occurrences and bad situations. And I realize today, folks, we all go through those things. But forgiveness has to be a key part of our life today. I'm sure today you can give me all the dialogue why you can't forgive and why you can't forget it about what's been done to you. But you know what? Every heart needs an inner healing today. And only God can provide that inner healing that is needed in our lives. I want you to know today, genuine forgiveness will change your heart forever. Life is too short to go through life holding grudges. Life is too short for families to be at odds with each other. Amen. 
And maybe the greatest gift that you could give a person or a family member this Christmas is a gift that is called forgiveness. That God has already provided for you. All you have to do is extend it. Or you may need to receive it. But realizing today, we all go through the issues of life today. God's offering you a day today, not a chance today. He's offering you not a chance of a lifetime. He's offering you a change of a lifetime. That today, these things will change your life. Hallelujah. And it's called the forgiveness of God, and it's the greatest gift that God has ever provided for you and I today. For forgiveness to take hold of our heart, I'm going to tell you what has to be loosed. You've got to loose today your pride. Pride, like sin, has a middle letter that is our biggest enemy, and it's an I. We become our worst enemy today in forgiveness. We become our worst enemy today in sin because today, listen, we get in our own way. You've got to get past yourself today, and you've got to let God take over. And for forgiveness to take place today, you've got to be loose from the pride that's holding you today. We've got to be, and realize that we've been commanded by God in His Word that we are to love people and that we're to care for people. Amen. They don't get quiet when I'm getting good. We've got to love people and we've got to care for people. And if we don't care for people, then I'm going to tell you right now, there's no evidence of love, of the love of God in our lives. If we don't love people, no, we're not all perfect. I don't know any perfect person in this room. I don't know of any perfect person on this earth. I only know of one who is perfect. And he's who we're here to sing about, to preach about, and to rejoice about today. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. And folks today, listen. Many times in our lives, we face struggles and trials. But I'm glad today the forgiveness of God can take care of everything that is, that is needed in our lives. Forgiveness is the evidence today of a change that God has worked in our lives. Amen. This forgiveness that God's provided. We, we should want to help people today who are struggling with Christmas. There's probably people sitting in this room right now that are struggling with Christmas. we got members of our church that are struggling with Christmas. we got people in our neighborhood out here that are struggling with Christmas. We run into people while you're out on Ward's Road and going to the malls and the shopping centers and all these other crazy places. There are people, they replace that you go, whether it's out to eat or to go to shop or whatever you do. You're going to run into people who are struggling, who are seeking answers and are seeking solutions for their life. And we should want to help these people who are struggling this Christmas season. Those who have had their heart crushed by some event or loss in their life. Those today that are lonely. You know, we may have a lot of family around us, but there are people that will be lonely during this Christmas season. There are people that are actually dreading Christmas Day because of the loneliness that will come with it. There are those who are broken. There are those who are even wayward. There are those that need encouragement. Does any of this fit a bill for you or someone that you know today? There are those who their hearts are crying out today. Listen, they're crying out for forgiveness. They're crying out for love. They're crying out for care. They just want to know somebody cares about them. Amen. And folks, we today are the representatives of Jesus Christ, that we are the arms, the feet, and the mouth, and the eyes of Christ today, that we reach into our communities and into our families, and we exhibit, we show how real this love that God has invested in us, how real it is. Amen. And we need today to have that love, that care, that concern, and that forgiveness in our hearts and our lives. There are those today that are sitting in this church today that need to be healed. That are going through some struggles in their health. Do you realize today God can take care of every one of these needs today? This God that I'm talking about that came and condescended and came down to this earth and was born of a virgin Mary, maybe she didn't understand it, but I tell you what, she knew that she was going to be bearing the Christ child the one that would come and bring forgiveness and bring hope and bring help to every person. And I believe Jesus touched her life. Amen. And just to know that she would be the one that would bear this child, I mean, that would be overwhelming. But you know what I find, as the Scriptures tells us, it says that Mary found favor with God. And this favors the fact that she had given her heart and her life to the Lord, her service and her dedication, and she had the Lord as her priority. Just a young girl, not well stricken in years, 
hadn't been through everything and experienced everything. She was young. She hadn't experienced a whole lot of anything. But I tell you one thing she had experienced. She had experienced the love of God that transformed her life. And when you experience that love that God provides, it will transform your life today. And God will mightily use you and bring down His blessings on your life that we can be people that care, people who love, the people who forgive, and people who have that focus right because we're looking to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This life is way too short with carrying baggage through life. This life is, flies by. Man, I remember the days when I was a kid getting into mischief. Huh. Still doing it, just my hair color is different. <laughs> and they all sit there and look at me like, oh, preacher. Let's flip the mirror. Yeah, we all there. But, you know, I remember, and I don't know where the days of my life have gone. They've gone by so quickly and so fast. And you know, as the older you get, and I think some of you can agree with me on this, so some of you who are younger, you, don't, you haven't gotten there yet, but you need to get there and understand this. That the older you get, the faster it goes. It's just not because you're busy. But you know, folks, you need to cleave to those greatest gifts. Those blessings that James talked about in James 1.17, that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father. Hallelujah. Those gifts today that you have, listen, it's not going to be that new car that somebody's parked in your driveway or, or all the other pageantry and great things and gifts. and All those things are fine in their place. But you know what? Listen, your greatest gifts are going to be those who are seated around the table with you, those that you call your family today, and just not your physical, earthly family today, but here's a family right here in this room right now that's called the family of God. And you know what? We're going to spend eternity. We're just not passing through this earth here and gone. You know what? One day we're all going to gather on the other side of that great place that God has prepared for us. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day. Let me tell you, you better learn to get along with people on this side. Because if they're born again, you're going to be with them forevermore. Hallelujah. Our greatest gifts today are what God has blessed us lavishly with. And maybe we don't have perfect families. Seems like today in our society today, there's a lot of dysfunctionality in families. But I'm going to tell you, push all that stuff. You know why we have it? Because we've let the world tell us that it's there. And because we bought into that and we've received that mentality today. That's not the family that God talks about. The family that God talks about, they love one another. You love your kids and the kids love their parents. And you love your nieces, your nephews, and all these other family members today. I got family, I'm, our family, we're a little bit scattered. But you know what? Thank God for what I've got. And thank God for these guys that stand with me and stand for me and love me. I hope they do. But anyway, I think they do. I thank God for my family. And I thank God for the wholesome relationship. Maybe you've got kids you haven't spoken to in a while. Maybe there's fractured relationships. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. You need to mend that. You need to get that right. I don't care what they've done to you or what you've done to them or whatever it is. Somebody's got to take the initiative to take the step to get things right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to regret it if you don't. And if you've got loved ones that maybe today you haven't had any contact with, you don't know when God's going to whisk them out of this life. And then you stand there and you wish you had done. Why not do it instead of wish it? Always do the right thing. Always take the high road. Always do that which is honoring to God. And if you've got family members or friends even today that you are at odds with, get it right in God. Amen. And it's simply as, as simple as this. Going and saying, forgive me, I don't know what went wrong, but you know what? We cannot turn the clock back. We cannot undo, redo, or anything else. But what we can do, we can go forward together in the bond and the love of God. Amen. Amen. It's not worth it. It is not worth it today. Get things right in your family. Get, right, get things right in your relationships today. And realize today there are some deceptions today that that concern forgiveness. One, people don't forgive because they don't feel like forgiving. 
Uh, if you have had pains of resentment in your life, you, you need to forgive. The pain in your soul today is that reminder that you need to forgive. Every time it comes up, it's a reminder you need to get things right. Secondly today, forgiveness is not an emotion. If you wait around to feel like forgiving, it's never going to happen. You've got to take the initiative. You've got to take, that's what God wants you to do. Forgiveness is an act of your will. You've got to step forward. Hallelujah. And forgiveness is something today that you want to do, but you, you may not want to do, but it's something that you must do. Amen. You, you can't fake happiness and laugh away today to joy. If these things are pulling and gnawing at your heart and your life and your soul today, you need to get them right. Hallelujah. And God can't bless you until you, until you do get it right. You know, I think about there's a story in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 23 about a man. You've heard of the Eliezer call? Uh, you've heard of Eliezer in the Bible, right? Okay. This was a man. His name was Eliezer. He was an Old Testament Rambo, I guess we could say. He was a warrior. He was a fighter. He was a contender. He was not a quitter. El Eliezer and had been a place, and he did, and the Israel's troops had basically retreated. He did not get the call. He did not hear the retreat. He remained and he fought. And he fought the Philistines valiantly and he fought the Philistines to victory. God mightily used him. Hallelujah. There's a lesson in that today. God can never bless you if you're a quitter in life. Eliezer had fought so long and so hard that battle in this battle that his hand had basically had become a part of the sword. He couldn't let it go. They had to pry his hands and his fingers away from the sword. And you know what? He could not let go of his weapon. And maybe today that's your situation in life. You, you can't let go today. You're like Eliezer today. You cannot let go of what has gripped your heart and gripped your life. And you know what? As long as you hold on to it, it's not going to bring any joy or happiness into your life. You're going to live in oppression and defeat and discouragement. But only God can pry those things out of your heart. Only God today, through the confrontation of the Holy Spirit, that He deals with us and we get it right with God and get it right with others, others today. You've got to get every bitterness out of your soul because I'm going to tell you what, it will destroy your mind, it will destroy your body, it will destroy your relationship with God and it will pull you down to the depths of despair and you're going to die lonely and broken. Let go of it. Release it. Let God take over. I can't forgive. Well, you know what? You better think about what Jesus done for you. In this room is the mighty presence of a living God today that came on this first Christmas that's still exalted and high and lifted up. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior today. He is Jesus. And you know what? He's come today to help you to remove all bitterness out of your soul. Like Eliezer today, you don't have to hold that sword any longer. You don't have to seek for revenge or getting even today. The greatest relief that you can experience is when you let go and let God take over. God is telling us today, you don't have to carry this thing any longer. Whatever burden, it's just not the forgiveness issue, but anything else in your life today, any burden that's on your heart, I'm here to tell you today, there's a God who will take it if you're willing to give it to Him. You've got to release it to His charge and His care and let Him take over today. God is telling you today, you don't have to carry these things and these burdens and these anxieties and these stresses and all this other stuff today. When the Word of God says, cast all of your care upon Him, we just relate that, well, what I'm going through, my stresses and my problems. It's more than that today. He's also not just not talking about your heartaches and your headaches. He's also talking about your unforgiveness. You can cast all of that on Him today. For God will take it today, but He can only take it when you're willing to let it go. Disappointments today do not have to be final. And they will not be fatal if you'll give them to God. You have to come today to the place and the point that you're willing to forgive and let God take over. Secondly today, you, you don't forgive when you, when you feel like forgiving. Well, you know, in the Word of God, there's 62 phrases today for forgiveness. 62 phrases. Not only that, 22 times spoken today in the Word of God about giving forgiveness to someone else. Jesus said, unless you forgive others, God will not forgive you. Amen. Forgiveness is not an option today. It's not based on your convenience. 
It is based on the command of God's word. Did I hear a pin drop? It, it could be you're not blessed because you're not willing to forgive. I forgave them, Pastor. But I won't forget it. Really? 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 I'm going to tell you what. You need to rephrase that. You haven't forgiven yet. If you're not willing to forget it. I will forgive them, but, you know, I will continue to tell everybody I know about what they did to me. Oh, really? Really? Come on, really? You haven't forgiven yet. Amen. You're still carrying around the baggage. Pastor, that's not fair. I'm a human and I can't help it. Listen, it's not fair today that any of us get to walk through this life forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. But thank God we are. Amen. So what is forgiveness? Well, I'll tell you what Jesus gave me, and I'll tell, him what he'll, I'll tell you what he'll give you. It's a full pardon. Full pardon. I'm released from it. I'm set free from it. I'm not controlled by it. I don't carry it with me to sleep. I don't carry it with me to work. I don't carry it with me everywhere I go. I'm released from that. It's gone. That's why David said it's cast as far as the east is from the west. That's what our sins are. Because you know what unforgiveness is? It is a sin. And forgiveness is a fresh start, a new day, a new life, a new chance today, a new blessing that God provides for us today. Forgiveness is something that God designed in the genius of His grace, of His love, and His mercy. I mean, listen, thank God that He gave all of that through the cross. And when you look at the cross, or you look at the cradle, you're reminded who came and who did what for you and I. And that was God. Forgiveness is a freedom that you can walk in. And if you're not forgiven today, you're in bondage. You're tied up. You're chained. You're in shackles. But thank God, through the blood of Jesus, that name that is above every name, that when you call on Him, those shackles are released and you're set free in the power and the grace and the mercy of our God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The greatest gift, the greatest gift this Christmas is the forgiveness of God because that's what the cradle is all about. That's what the manger is all about. And today, listen, you can come and you can receive today this gift. You can come today and give this gift. You today can bring it all to the Lord. And he's taking it. As I close today, I got four little quick bullet points to give you and I'm through. Forgiveness because we are forgiven. Forgiveness because we are forgiven. When we understand how much God has forgiven us, you know what? You're then set free to forgive others. I'm telling you, I'm sure every one of you in this room have forgiven somebody or something that happened in your life, right? What did you feel when that happened? You felt something lifted off of you. And that's what God does. Forgiveness, just, or forgive just as we are forgiven. Secondly today, how did God forgive us? The Bible says he forgave us for Christ's sake. And by that he is saying, I forgive you unconditionally today. There's not attachments. You forgive and it's gone. Hallelujah. Third, forgive that we might be forgiven. Because if we're not willing to forgive, how can God forgive us? And fourth, forgive before you need to be forgiven. God has the greatest gift for you this Christmas. My question to you today is, will you receive it? I mean, he's already provided it today. If there are things in your life today, if there are places in your life, if there are pains in your life today, Jesus stands at this altar and I close with this scripture. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Whatever's in your life today, maybe it's in your relationships with your family. Maybe today it's in people and things in your life. Maybe there are things in the past that just seem to 
attach themselves to you that you can't shake. I'm going to tell you right now, the blood of Jesus will set you free. And today you can leave here forgiven, you can leave here blessed, and you can leave here today really knowing what the joy of the Lord is all about. Bring it all to Him, and He'll meet your every need today. Father, we commit this invitation to your care, your keeping today. I don't know what the need may be in hearts and lives, but I do know there's a God in this room today that can take care of every need, every burden, every struggle, every trial, every issue, everything that we're going through. Lord, just not the forgiveness issue, but Lord, you can cast, we can cast every burden on you today, sickness and trial and dilemma and heartache and loneliness and disappointment. And oh God, it's just the list goes on. But here's a God who loves us that sent a baby to be born of a virgin, to die our death, to win our victory. Lord, move on our hearts right now. Would you stand to your feet right now? Father, just today, touch. If there's anyone in this room today that's not saved and does not have that assurance, I pray right now they'll ask Jesus Christ into their heart and their life. Help them to come. I'm going to stand right here. If you need to be saved, you come. I would honor, be honored and would consider it a joy to pray with you today and introduce you to the Jesus Christ who will change your life. Will you come? He's knocking on your heart's door. Will you come and receive what he has for you today?